We're measuring taste and smell for the first time. You've been able to measure the chemicals in a Coca-Cola for quite a while. You can use a technology called mass spec or gas chromatography, or there's some other chemical detectors that will tell you roughly what chemicals are in Coca-Cola. But they don't tell you anything about what Coca-Cola tastes or smells like. And so we're uh, working on a way to capture the human sensory experience of a taste or smell. And the elegant way to do that, the only way we could figure out to do that, is to clone the actual stuff out of your nose and tongue that lets you taste Coca-Cola and uh, <clears throat> clone it into a little plastic disposable biosensor where the receptors from your nose and tongue would react the same as they do inside your head. They're a disposable one-use chip, and so they'll range from $99 up to, you know, maybe the Anthony Bourdain chip will be $2,500. You can sit a glass of Coca-Cola next, um, next to the sensor, or you can pour Coca-Cola directly onto the sensor. And uh, the receptors, there are 365 olfactory receptors in the human nose. There are only five taste receptors on the tongue. But these 370 receptors will react in our uh, biosensor the same as they do in your nose and tongue. And then we give you a digital readout of what they've been doing. And in that way, we, we say we are capturing the uh, taste and smell of Coca-Cola. You can do that not just for Coke, but for any of the ingredients that you might want to use to make Coke or uh, any, uh, eh, really any, anything that has a smell or taste to it. It seems like uh, humans probably can detect easily millions, if not hundreds of millions, of different tastes and, and smells. Normally, we tell uh, customers to take several readings. So expose the chip once, and then the way that you read it is you pop it into something called a plate reader, which looks, it's kind of the same size as an old uh, laser printer, uh, kind of big clunky machine, mm -hmm. but everybody has them. Every uh, high school biology lab has them. All of our customers have them. And uh, you pop the plate into the plate reader, and uh, then you can read it every five minutes uh, for, say, an hour. And that'll give you very robust data about what the smell or taste is. Well, a big driver right now is to uh, reformulate existing products. So one big food and beverage company has 15,000 products, and they were all created in an era where you just wanted it to taste and smell great. We want, as consumers, we want our Fritos or our Funyums to taste great, but we also want them to be healthy, or, we, or we'll go to the healthier alternative. So uh, there's a big movement underway to reformulate uh, all of these, uh, uh, all of these uh, products to make them healthier, and always to make them uh, less costly, uh, sometimes to reformulate them because you've lost a key ingredient or come up with your favorite cola, but this time made from kale and pine nuts and chamomile, uh, and uh, doesn't give you diabetes. We've uh, talked with a big uh, perfume maker who told us fraud is a terrible uh, problem, counterfeit product. One thing we could do is uh, give customs officers a chip that will tell them, okay, this is the actual perfume or this is off and uh, allow them to detect counterfeit that way. And that all goes directly to the bottom line. We think uh, eventually it could go directly to consumers uh, and there can be consumer uses. You may eventually see uh, the sensing technology on a laptop or tablet or, or cell phone.